you guys, Sean T. Phillips here on my November 25th DVD update. Where I talk about the DVDs and Blu-rays that I've saved a review and talk about for you guys over the last couple weeks or so. Like I always say, guys, enjoy these DVD and Blu-ray update videos. Definitely give this video a thumbs up. Let me know below, too, what you guys thought about the titles I checked out and reviewed this update. Any new DVD and Blu-rays which you guys would like me to review for titles in the future. And some of the new movies which you guys have picked up recently. Also, let me know, too, what some of the stuff you guys picked up during Black Friday. Since, you know, Black Friday just happened. And if you guys haven't seen it, too, definitely check out my Black Friday, you know, shopping video that I did. Uh, the first one I got here from Universal is the 4K Ultra HD edition of the new Steven Soderbergh film, Lucky Logan. And I saw this one in theaters as well. Really, really like this movie a lot. It's kind of like taking uh, one of Steven Soderbergh's really big budget films, like the Ocean's Eleven films, like high action type films. And then mixing it with kind of more of an indie feel, like the like one of the indie films he did, like Bubble, which is like one of my favorite things he did. Really, really underrated, great movie. But um, it's kind of like mixing those two things together, that kind of a big budget feel, but then like with off, like it's also like an indie kind of feel to it as well. This movie's basically though about Channing Tatum and Adam Driver's bro, as they're who play you know brothers in this, and they live in this really small town, and they're always kind of trying to you know get money and never really having a whole lot of luck and a lot of things that have happened in the past that haven't been great, and you know Channing Tatum is you know wants to have more money for his daughter and also really wants to kind of get out of where he lives because he doesn't just is kind of tired of the whole everything about. It, like the memories of it. So they come up with this idea of robbing the, um, the speedway there, you know, during like, I think it's called the, the Char Charlotte Motor Speedway during Coca-Cola 600, like a huge NASCAR race. So they come up with this idea that, and, they, and because of um, what Sham Tatum's, you know, you know, does in this movie, he works like on this construction site. He kind of knows about a way that they can kind of get into this safe, but you know, and steal this money. But they also, though, they don't really know anything about pulling off this kind of thing up trying to get um, Daniel Craig's character who's in prison they're kind of trying to get him and the team and they have to come up with the idea of how to get him out of jail, you know, for the night without anyone knowing he's missing. It's a, it's just an insane movie. This whole crazy heist thing that they're trying to pull off, and they really have no clue what they're doing. And they put people in their team. They're also working with their sister and trying to pull off this entire thing. And it's kind of I I, I don't know. I just thought this was actually one of the most fun kind of like heist films in a really really long time. And it doesn't take itself too seriously as well with what's happening in it. Uh, but it has on here some deleted scenes on this release. But as for 4K though looks absolutely amazing on 4k if you guys have 4k definitely you know this is one i would recommend you know picking up the 4k one of this release and the big thing with 4k is you know the h the high dynamic ranges, all the contrast levels, the brightness levels, though, just definitely looks like a, you know really great. Uh, the next one here from Lionsgate is a is the new movie starring Michael Keaton called American Assassin, and this stars Dylan O'Brien, and it's Dylan O'Brien you know from the Maze Runner films. I believe he was also in Teen Wolf. And this is, you know, the movie starts off with him, Dylan O'Brien's character and his girlfriend at the beach, and he just proposed to her. And they're out. I, I can't remember exactly where they were, but in the, in the beginning, though, his girlfriend gets killed. And this is the very beginning of the movie. She gets killed, and he becomes, and it's by these group of these, you know, these terrorists, and he becomes, you know, obsessed with um, trying to track down the people that were responsible for her death, like the whole group and everything. So he finds a way to kind of infiltrate into their system to try and get to where they are so he can get you know kill them and because to get revenge and the CIA is tracking him because they don't really know what he's up to and if he's like a bad guy or what he's going to be doing you know Dylan O'Brien's character and they say listen you know you got to this guy and we know you know what you know we want to talk to you about what was going on why were you with this group and he tells them and they're like well you know either basically you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life or you're going to work for us the CIA and you're going to get trained by Michael Keaton's character and he's like oh, all right I'll do it so it's kind of him getting trained by Michael Keaton's character to work for the CIA going through all all the tasks and it's kind of them trying to pull off these missions about you know getting the bad guys and stuff I thought it was actually a pretty fun movie you know I always like everything with Michael Keaton and Michael Keaton totally plays like this kind of real crazy like you don't mess with him at all kind of guy in this movie you know when he's training him and stuff and I don't know I, I've always been a fan of Michael Keaton I thought this was like just a crazy kind of you know it was also sad too about you know some of the stuff was happening in this movie as well but I don't know I thought this was actually relatively well done for the most part 
has on here though a bunch of different you know featurettes on here um the alamo, alamo draft house q a on here thing on here about the training and the stunts and, uh, and the film locations it's another one you know the 4k release of this one i didn't get to see this one in theaters so i just only watched the, the 4k at home but looks great though definitely another one very gritty action film so definitely looks you know great on 4k so if you guys have 4k another one would recommend for that uh the next one here from lion's gate is a movie called uh horror movie called the crucifixion and this one was about um it's basically, though, about this journalist that was like this. It's kind of an interesting story, though. It was about this nun that had, you know, gotten killed. And they're trying to figure out exactly what had happened because she, like, got possessed and stuff. And that's what they say had happened. And so she kind of goes. Where was it she goes? I think it was to, like, I can't remember where it was. I think it was to Rome or something. I can't remember for 100% certain where she goes. But it's, she's doing this kind of paper on the whole thing. So she ends up going to talk to, like, the priests that were involved you know, in, you know, what, what, how she died. And they're kind of trying to figure out, she's trying to figure out exactly what had happened and why this nun had gone kind of crazy and what had happened and like what she was messing around with and stuff. And it's kind of one of those things where once she starts kind of digging into the, the past and looking at the past of this nun and kind of the people that she was kind of connected to and stuff, of course, you know, like something bad is going to kind of be coming for her for messing around with all this stuff and stuff dealing with possessions and stuff. It was, I think it was a different kind of take on a possession type film because I've never really seen one where it was kind of like a nun getting possessed and this kind of a vibe of, of a movie and it was actually kind of creepy too the director of this too I can't remember if offhand some of the other ones that he did but he did a cut like I think he a couple other ones I remember really liking though so he's, he's done some pretty cool other horror movies in the past as well the director's name was um Xavier Jens I think but I remember him doing a couple other horror movies that I really liked as well but this has on here though a feature ad on here as well as a trailer gallery on this one this one here though is from the BP BBC this is a really cool set they sent here and this is the complete series of Orphan Black and this is a show that I had always wanted to see and I had never seen any episodes about of this and I always had heard you know amazing like reviews and people always were saying what how what a good show it was it's one of those ones that i just i started watching through it you know i've watched a couple episodes it's one of those things where you kind of really want to just keep watching it and the main actress on this you know she was in that white bird and a, that was it what was the one with um, two lovers and a bear with the movie with dane dehan you know which is an amazing movie she was really great in that and she's in this in this show she plays all these different characters because it's her i got you know and i'll show you though you know the discs and everything as well but in the show though She's pretty much, though, uh, she discovers this woman on the train, by, by the train when she's waiting for a train, that looks identical to her. And she jumps in front of the tracks and dies. And it's kind of her, you know, realizing, oh, I can, you know, because it looks like this woman has money and stuff. So she takes her purse and stuff and then comes to find out she's got all this money and wants to kind of impersonate her. And she finds out she's a cop. But once she finds out this stuff, other people that look just like her start kind of popping up. And it's kind of this whole thing is going on here. And she's trying to figure out exactly why are there people that look like me? And then there's people coming after her and coming after these people that look like her. And it's kind of her, you know, dealing with this whole thing as well as trying to, you know, live the life of the other person. But she plays all these kind of other characters that look exactly like her. And you find out throughout it, like, what's going on. But she does an amazing job playing these characters all like slightly different and, very, and some of them extremely different with different accents and different kind of looks and everything but a really really good show like I said I don't know how I had never seen it before in here though it has a book with you know pictures and like you know and facts and stuff about the show and facts about the characters in here I, and I believe this is you know exclusive to this release and this release like I said has all five of the seasons you know together it has season one here it has season um season two and then season three and then season four and then of course, you know of course season five and season five i think just aired like a couple months back so it's cool these are you know all together in the set like this like i said one of those shows I, I just don't know how i had never seen it before and really really got into it like it's one of those ones like i said i'm definitely going to continue on watching this because not all shows kind of hook you in you know some shows do in the beginning you get really hooked on them but that one you know is one i would say definitely is very well done the next one here from um this is from dark sky films this is one i was really interested in seeing this is a movie starring Francesca Eastwood and the one um, guy in this is from that movie you know arseholes or a-holes so I really loved lately he directed this he has a small part in the, you know but a big thing to do with the story but he was you know acts in this and directed that movie which is an amazing like in, insane film this movie is called um, MFA 
this is like a revenge film. And this is, um, you know, Francesca Eastwood meets this guy at this part. You know, she meets him at school. She's in, he's in his art, in her art class and she starts to kind of like him. So she goes to this party with him at night and, um, you know, he gets very, very rough with her and, you know, he sexually assaults her and it's kind of like, it throws her too because he seemed like a really nice guy and then he, what he did to her was terrible and it was like horrible the way he acted and then he acted like he didn't do anything wrong. It was a very, very crazy the way he was being this, like he kind of flipped how he was this really nice guy, seemed like he was real compassionate and then the what what, what he did, which was horrible and after this though, she's kind of like, uh, becomes a mess after this. She finds out too that at the school there was all these other sexual assaults and stuff like that but she ends up going to confront the guy at his you know that did this to her and of course he's acting like what do you mean you know I thought you were into this I thought you know you were playing along and all that and he ends up accidentally falling off over the, the banister in the place that he lives and dying and she runs out there and you know runs out and leaves and sort of happy this happened so then she's like, I'm going to try, she wants to get revenge and, you know, take out all the other guys that have kind of got away with assaults and stuff like that at that school so that's pretty much what it is, is her going and then like this cop played by um, Clifton College Jr. who is, um, you know, kind of following, you know, and trying to figure out, but you know, who is behind all of this. And she's always, he's always following Francesca Eastwood's character. But Francesca Eastwood, though, did a really great job playing this role in this one. I saw her recently, too, in that movie The Vault, which was actually pretty good as well. But this one is one I would definitely recommend you guys check out. I, it was a pretty, actually really pretty good uh, revenge film. And it was a little different, too. Like, I didn't expect everything that was happening this one and the next ones I got here from Olive Films. This is from their line, the Olive Signature line. And these are two different ones here. And the Olive Signature line are basically special editions of their releases. And I think they might have released these ones in the past, but these ones have brand new high-def transfers on these. And there are two different ones here, Operation Petticoat. And that one is about um, this naval ship and these army nurses are stranded out at sea and they end up having to rescue them and they come on the ship and it's kind of them having like all kinds of problems and like kind of comedic over the top kind of encounters and stuff and then Father Goose was this guy who ends up working you know with the army who has to be like kind of a lookout in a small island and then it's these schoolgirls and their teacher end up washing up on the island and that ends up having a whole bunch of like bumbling kind of problems these were like the late 50s early 60s they kind of have like the Gilligan's Island sort of feel to them a little bit especially uh, Father Goose and like like I said, these both have, you know, brand new transfers on these. And inside of them, they have um, booklets and stuff with, um, pic you know, pictures and facts and stuff about the film. It was a really definitely pretty cool ones if you guys are fans of these movies. And I definitely love this line that they do. Like I said, the Olive Signature line. And they have in the Father Goose has the booklet as well with pictures and stuff like that about the films. But just want to let you guys know these ones are available. The next one I got here from MVD is a science fiction movie, which I had never seen before, called The Man from Earth. And this is the brand new special edition of this one and this is one too they have a restoration thing on here because this was originally shot on like these mini dv tapes and they show how they restored this and they did a really great job you know you know putting this onto blu-ray but everybody's in this movie there's um william katz in this richard riley uh, tony todd is in this tony todd has a great part in this because it's, it's, a, it's a different kind of type take on a science fiction movie because it's not like you know a whole lot of like like out in space or any of that kind of stuff or big aliens and stuff it's all a dialogue driven um you know kind of sort of like a clerk's kind of thing where it's like a lot like all dialogue about um this professor who's like having this kind of going away party. You don't know if he's like retiring or if he's going to go somewhere else and they kind of think maybe he's writing a book because he starts kind of telling them stories about things and he starts saying how uh, about this this, this uh, man who you know was a Neanderthal man lived during um, you know lived through all these lives and you know experienced all these things and he starts to kind of he starts, starts saying no this was me and I experienced these things and they're all like oh well, and they're kind of thinking that he may be like making this like I said making this up for some kind of story so they're kind of playing along with all these things he's saying about these other lives he lived and all these things that he went through and all these things that he saw and experienced so they're kind of like well, what what do you mean or, oh, and, then, and then he's but they're starting to think like he keeps saying no this is me and then they kind of are starting to think well is this true is what he's saying is that he's lived through all these lives and it's like i said it's a very well done character story about all this stuff like i said very different take on a science fiction film it has on here though tons of features it has a brand new uh, documentary on here which is 88 minutes talking about the film and the history talking about as well jerome bixby who wrote this movie right before he passed away um 
as well as a number of different featurettes on here, um, some of the archival features from the past release of this one from 2007, a commentary track on here with um, the producer of this one, but a really interesting different science fiction movie. The next one here from MVD and Cleopatra uh, Entertainment is one called The Rift, uh, Dark Side of the Moon. This is an interesting science fiction one as well, and this stars Ken Foray. This is about like this astronaut you know, spaceship that ends up crashing in Serbia. And it's about like this woman and Ken Fury going to investigate it to where it happened and like, get there. But when they get there, though, like in the whole area, it's like something sort of strange going on. They realize that something is kind of odd happening in this in where you know where they are. So it's kind of them trying to figure out you know what's going on. It's a very dark, you know, uh, gloomy feeling science fiction movie. Ken Free though, I wasn't sure how much he was going to be in the movie though, but he's like throughout this whole movie has a really good part in this movie. Always a fan of Ken Foray. but like a different science fiction movie with a really really great setting in this one as well. I don't know. I thought this was actually kind of different, different kind of science fiction. Like I said, a very dark feeling one sort of like um it's hard to even say what it was like but they had definitely had some cool sets and stuff in this one but this one has on here though a theatrical trailer a making of behind the scenes as well as a music video also a lot of really good music in this one as well uh the next one here from wild eye releasing is a movie called ghost witch and this was um about um this paranormal this woman that kind of hears this story about um this haunted house and she kind of hears about this and um then, like, the people that she goes to school with, though, they have, like, this paranormal team, and they want to go and kind of investigate this house and this area, you know, where they believe that this 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 kind of ghostly stuff had happened. Of course, though, you know, though, anytime they go to this kind of area or they do something like this, something is not going to go well. So this team goes there with all their equipment and stuff and, like, to film the whole thing and see if they can actually document anything for their show to get like because they put it up online and stuff and they want to try and get a lot of views and stuff but they go out there and of course though weird things start to happen to them and they're trying to figure out what's happening here but it was like kind of like i said like a paranormal kind of ghost kind of type film here this one has a commentary track on here deleted scenes outtakes and trailers on this one this one here this is kind of a fun movie called the spanish chainsaw massacre this is um a like a rock band that um you know, they're kind of like sort of starting out. They're getting some, you know, popularity to them. But they end up breaking down this small town. And, um, of course, though, they find out that the, where they broke down with their tour bus is, like, full of these, like, crazy cannibalistic kind of, like, people that are like, eating people. And they're kind of totally insane. It's a real total gore fest. Like, there's some crazy over-the-top gore and stuff about them getting attacked and stuff. But it's them, you know trying to survive there when they broke down with all these people kind of coming after them. Like I said, it's a total insane, like, it's called Chainsaw Massacre too because it's like, supposed, you know, Spanish Chainsaw Massacre is set in Spain and got the same kind of feel of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, kind of what's happening, because, like, the sort of vibe to the whole thing. But if you guys like, you know, super, you know, gory kind of stuff like that, definitely check this one out on here. Uh, this one here, though, is from Troma here, and it's, it's kind of a fun superhero movie called The Middle Finger, but it's a superhero movie mixed with kind of like a teen kind of... Um, like growing up type, you know, coming of age type film. And one thing I always love too with Tromo's movies is like they have the, you know, intros with Lloyd Kaufman. Those are some of the most fun things. Like I, I don't know, something about them that he's always done them. You know, I always remember too, even when I was a kid, you know, like I think I was like 11, 12 when I first started watching Tromo movies. And I remember too, always seeing those intros. That's always like my favorite thing. This has a very funny intro as well. But this is about this kind of, this teen like who's like, he never really is very popular in school. He doesn't really have much going on. But one night though, and he gets picked on by everybody he's giving him all kinds of problems but he ends up one night like hears this voice and like something gives him this power to be a superhero and he and he has to wear you know he's wearing this like middle finger costume and this like thing on his head it's a really goofy type thing but you know he ends up you know trying to be like a crime fighter and it kind of starts off you know helping people and it's kind of like all dealing with like this coming of age thing but once he starts to you know becomes a superhero he starts kind of having confidence and stuff and starts people sort of start to notice him more but it has on here though out, outtakes making of trailers commentary track tons and tons of features on this uh, the next one here 
uh, the director sent this one over, uh, Justin Price. Um, I believe it was Justin Price. Uh, yeah, Justin Price, so I make sure I say his name right. But it's a movie that's released from um, Uncorked Entertainment. And this one is actually in Redbox as well, you guys can rent. And it's a movie called Alien Reign of Man. You, it's also, I believe, on Amazon as well. I'm reviewing some of his other movies coming up as well. But this one is basically, though, it's like a, it's kind of a, got a vibe of like aliens mixed with Prometheus, that kind of feel to this. And it's a very ambitious movie, too. It's a low-budget film, but they have like it's all science, you know, set on this like planet. And they did a pretty good job too because there's lots of different effects in this and a lot of like the creatures and these aliens and stuff. But it's, um, they're trying to like, they're on this distant planet, these like, um, you know, astronaut kind of characters. And they're on this planet, they're trying to pretty much like, um, find this certain type of device so they can kind of save the earth and stuff that sort of like they're trying to like bring earth back back to life that's sort of what i think was going on i was a little confused with some of what was happening a little bit but you know they're on this planet but they've got these aliens and stuff on the planet that are kind of coming after them and then they have also stuff set on the ship the people who are up above you know why the other ones are down there looking for this device and the ship and stuff too they did a pretty good job on the sets and stuff on this like i said it's a very low budget film and i always like too when it's like a lower budget film and they do like a lot of work Work into the sets and the details and stuff like that. This one has on here though cast interviews, uh, deleted scenes, behind the scenes featurettes on this movie, and the next ones here are from a company called uh, Now, uh, no, called Wow Now. And it's two different ones, and they're both anthology films. And as one is here is um, the Invoking Four uh, Halloween Nights, and this one I believe you can rent in Redbox. I'm pretty sure I saw that. And this one uh, has a bunch of different horror. I think it's five different horror shorts on this. My favorite one on here was the one with Pollyanna McIntosh. You know, she's on the newest season of Walking Dead, but she was in the, the movie The Woman. Uh, you know, Lucky McGee's film, The Woman. Uh, Offspring. I was a fan of her stuff. I even got to work with her in this one movie years back. Really nice lady, but um, it's a, like I said, it's an anthology film. And it's basically, though, uh, you know, the segment that I love, though, was like this weird kind of like. Um, women that are like in this kind of like breeding type place and there's kind of like really strange stuff going on and they're kind of all ch chained up and there was a really interesting story and Tally Polly and McIntosh's character is this doctor he's in charge of these women so it's a very like crazy story but there's a, like I said a bunch of different uh, horror shorts on this one that one to me always like stood out the most the other one here is one called Demon and this one as well um I believe you can get this one on Amazon, I believe. Um, I'll put a link, though, for where you guys can find these. But um, this is another one that's, like, I wasn't sure it was going to be an anthology movie, but it has, like, different types of segments and stuff in it. But the one on this one that I liked the best was this guy who was a demon, but he ended up accidentally, you know, he's supposed to, you know, he ended up screwing up, and he accidentally turned into an angel. But he didn't want to because, he, you know, he saved this woman, like, pushed her out of the way or something. But because of that, he had, you know, he was like, I don't want to be an angel. And he has to try and figure out how he's going to go back and be a demon again, you know, and, and like, because he doesn't, if he's, because of what happened, though, he's going to turn into, like, a, you know, a human again. It's a really weird kind of story. But it's interesting, though. But he has to, like, figure out what he's going to do. And so, like I said, both these ones here are from the company called Wow Now. And I remember doing some of their other stuff, too, in the future. Uh, and the next one here, this is from... What, what company was this through here? Uh, from Indie Picks Films. It's a movie called Candy Apple. This was a really interesting movie. This is about um, this, this guy who... Um, like a real alcoholic guy and his son and like it's kind of a, it's a real New York kind of movie with like some really quirky odd type of characters and you can tell too like people who are not like professional actors and stuff they kind of found and stuff and he um he's like always drinking and stuff and his son was trying to make this short film and it's um it's really hard to explain though because he's like trying to like doing all these weird things and like he's going around drinking and he's trying to like date this one woman and then it's like it's just kind of like weird encounters this guy is going through and the weird friends the son has and just kind of quirky weird stuff going on in New York with this guy and there's like also these weird kind of like dream type sequences in this and it's very hard to explain it's interesting though look at the trailer for it it's not it's one of those things I was thinking about like how, how am I going to explain that one anyway though guys that's all for the, you know the new update video thanks so much for watching and subscribing I'll see you guys later bye